Hi, and um, welcome to this uh, slightly shorter episode uh, where I'm going to talk about the uh, ongoing drama in the Leaf community that is Rapidgate. On, over on the uh, Speak EV forums and on Facebook and on Twitter, there's been something unfolding basically uh, with people being quite upset about the uh, 2018 Nissan Leaf's ability to do multiple rapid charges uh, sequentially. So, you know, let's say you're doing a really long journey and you drive you know, maybe 100, 150 miles rapid charge, drive another 100, 150 miles rapid charge, and do that at three or more times. So, I mean, you'd be doing a fair distance at that point, you know, over 350 miles, um, you might start seeing this issue. Now, um, Jonathan Porterfield recently did a video along with James from James and Kate, and someone else whose name I forget, uh, I apologize for that if you're watching. Um, now, they took a 28 kilowatt hour uh, Hyundai Ionic and they took a 30 kilowatt hour um, Nissan Leaf and they took a 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf and tried to drive uh, to Aberdeen docks. I forget where from, but it, it was a 450 mile journey. Um, now, I won't spoil the ending to say who won or who didn't, but what I will say is that the 2018 Nissan Leaf was three hours behind. Um, and the reason for that is the other chart the other cars could rapid charge quite easily um and there they was there was no throttling despite the fact they were being driven hard and um then immediately rapid charge and then immediately being driven hard again um the 2018 nissan leaf however um uh, starts throttling the charges quite early on so you can see it here on my channel back in episode 9 i uh did a trip up from middlesbrough to washington services uh, down to Ferry Bridge and then back to Middlesbrough. Uh, and I did three rapid charges along the way. I probably didn't need to do three, but I, I was trying to deliberately stage the uh, test to do as many rapid charges as possible. I left home with half a battery, things like that. Just to, just to see what the car was capable of. It, it was new to me, I wanted to find out what it could do. And in those videos, it was um, quite visible that my initial charge was quite slow. Um, I think it was charging at about 38 kilowatts maybe, and eventually kind of crept up to 40. Um, and then, the second one was much lower, uh, I think probably about 28 kilowatts, and the third one was about 22 kilowatts. Um, now, given that the uh, Chadmo standard uh, and the Chadmo port in the car is capable of 50 kilowatts, that's quite worrying because you'd expect um, to be able to do at least the first rapid charge should be at 50 kilowatts. Now, I know that the um, Ecotricity chargers generally don't output above 42 kilowatts. Um, I'm actually sat at an ABB rapid charger right now, um, and I'm told that these ones can do a bit better, but I'm actually only drawing 43 kilowatts from this right now, so I don't know if it's the charger or the car. Um, I might. I, I'm can't. I don't think I've ever seen 50 kilowatts. Put it that way. Um, so a lot of people are quite upset about this because they figured with the the longer range they would still be able to rapid charge the way you could with the previous Leafs and with pretty much every other electric vehicle. And it very much seems that right now you can't do that. Um, and I, I I understand the frustration. Uh, I do, but for me, it's just not an issue for me, for the way I use the car. Um, I don't do long journeys all that often. Yes, I will do long journeys occasionally, and on those occasions, I'm sure if I'm traveling beyond 350 miles, that'll be an issue. Even my longer journeys are probably going to be below that, and so, I mean, like, I've got one coming up, I've got to go to Manchester uh, at some point in the near future, and, uh, I, you know, I'll monitor the rapid charges along the way and, and put that up on YouTube. But e even then, that's only... Um, yeah, it's what, a 250, 300 mile round trip, and I'll be stopping when I'm there, so the battery will get a chance to cool down. It's not gonna be an issue for me. It's only, if, yeah, if I was going to London or, or somewhere further afield, then yeah, I could totally see why that would be an issue. Um, but it, it, it just doesn't really affect me that much. But for people who are you know, looking at doing long commutes or if they have really long journeys, um, there's a, a gentleman on Speak EV who uh, lives uh, somewhere quite far north in Scotland, has to travel um, down to, I think it's the Midlands somewhere, and that, you know, that's a decent journey, that's what, 500 odd miles? So in if you're doing that journey regularly, I can see how that would be a problem. So, you know, a lot of people are kind of jumping up and down, I've seen people cancelling pre-orders, things like that. Honestly, I think that's quite an overreaction. Um, there's, I've seen people um, claiming that, you know, there's this huge conspiracy and Nissan are deliberately lying to people. Nissan have been tweeting saying, um, that they're aware of two incidents that they're investigating. Um, now, 
they've been saying that despite multiple people saying, hey, there's this issue. Now, that's probably because the PR department is quite disconnected from the actual department doing the investigation. Um, and they're probably only getting periodic updates about that. And in the meantime, they're just copying and pasting the same response because it's probably the only information the people behind the Twitter account actually have. Is that frustrating for people? Probably. Um, is it understandable? Yeah, I think I think so. Um, it's going to take a while for them to get to the bottom of this. It's going to take a while to get sorted out. But I'm pretty confident they will sort it out. Um, so at the moment, we don't know whether it's to do with the lack of active calling uh, or whether it's to do with um, a very overprotective um, thermal management controller. So I think it's probably... A very, I think it's probably a combination of the two, right? They know they don't have uh, active cooling on the battery, it's just passive cooling. Um, what that means is there's no fans or water cooling on the battery to help cool it down. It just uses the air around it to cool it down. Um, the ambient temperature, essentially, to cool the battery down. Now, that means it takes longer to cool down, it's harder for the battery cells to cool down. So when you're driving hard and you're rapid charging, the battery will build up heat in the, in the battery cells. and it will need to get rid of that heat because too much heat in the battery is a problem. And if you want to then dump tons of charge into that battery while it's very hot, that can actually do some damage to the battery. So that's why um, you know some cars have uh, active cooling. You have fans kick in when you're rapid charging or if you've been driving hard for a while, just to bring that temperature back down to a more moderate level where all the electrons can happily flow around without doing any damage. So yeah, because there's a, a lack of active thermal management, the thermal management controller or sorry, the battery management controller is probably overcompensating. Um, and it's basically slowing down the charge probably sooner than it needs to in order to uh, protect the battery. Now there's probably also a business reason for this as well. Nissan sold off their battery manufacturing department uh, and they spun it out to a separate company and as I understand it, they no longer own it. Now, when Nissan had that essentially in-house, uh, if they needed to do a swap for a customer's battery, they could essentially do that at cost um, and it wouldn't be an issue for them. Now that it's a separate company, they're probably not going to get away with that and there's probably certain contractual obligations where they've got to do certain things to protect the battery uh, before they'll be able to get a replacement, maybe discounted or free of charge from that, that battery manufacturer. Um, so as a result, they've probably cranked up the protection levels in the battery management system to protect the cells in the battery because they want to make that you know a they want to meet their contractual obligations and b they probably want to uh you know minimize the amount of batteries they do need to swap out by making them last longer by protecting them so it's all a trade-off between you know making the batteries last as long as possible letting people do the crazy journeys they want to do and uh and obviously you know dealing with those business contracts so it's a complicated balance. Uh, yeah, this is all conjecture. And I, Nissan haven't really spoken to me at all about this. Um, uh, there was some conjecture I've seen where people think that I'm one of the two cases Nissan are aware of. If that is the case, Nissan haven't contacted me at all. I'm certain they're aware of Jonathan Porterfield. Um, I don't know who else has contacted them, or if they were aware of me and haven't contacted me. I, I don't know. There's, there's, yeah, there's plenty of people with these cars now, so I'm, I'm not the only person with a car. I'm probably not the only person who's got in touch with Nissan. Um, I have got in touch with Nissan. All that's happened so far is I've providing, provided them my registration and my VIN number on Twitter in the DM and was told someone would get back to me. That's it. Now, you know, they may be able to look at data on their system from that. Uh, I, I guess the VIN number alone is enough for them to look at the telematics system and find out you know, what's been going on with my battery. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Nissan will get in touch with me when they deem it appropriate and maybe we'll get something sorted. I might have to take my car back in for uh, a recall, whether that's uh, in the form of a software update um, or whether it's in the form of... Sorry, I, I'm rapid charging at the moment. I've just noticed that at the moment I am actually pulling 45 kilowatts off this ABB charger. Um, it's kind of teetering between 44 and 45, but that's probably the highest rapid charge rate I think I've ever seen. So it's just around the 50% mark, it's just kind of picking up to 40, uh, 45 kilowatts. Um, sorry, that's that's new to me. Um, yeah, I think that's the highest I've ever seen. Um, so where was I? I think there's two ways Nissan could fix this. One is to uh, essentially flash a software update to the battery management system to allow it to run hotter while doing rapid charging. 
I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I know some people are worried that if they do crank up the uh, charging batch, uh, the charging temperature limits, that there may be some damage caused to the battery cells. I don't necessarily think that's the case. Uh, it really depends on so many factors. It could be that if it is just Nissan being overprotective and they've cranked up the uh, the settings, then cranking them back to the same as the old Leaf probably won't do any damage any worse than the previous generation Leaf. So I don't necessarily think that's going to be an issue. Um, or it could be that they decide to fit active cooling to the pack somehow. Um, or it could be they do a combination of both. Or maybe something I haven't even thought of. Um, I guess we'll have to see. I've seen some people talking about retrofitting the... Uh, the 40 kilowatt ENV 200 battery packs onto this. I don't think that's going to work because I, I think they're a different shape because it's a different shape vehicle. So I don't think you're just going to be able to take those units and drop them in here. You might be able to take some of the technology and adapt it to fit in the cells here, but I don't think you can literally just remove a battery pack from an ENV and drop it into a Leaf because the Leaf battery pack is designed to fit under the seats and I'm sure that it's been you know, arranged differently on the EMV 200. I could be wrong, but I would imagine it's arranged differently. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting situation. I think it's uh, there's a lot of angry um, rhetoric flying around from people that I think is probably a little bit unnecessary. Um, I think we just need to take a breath, um, sit back and wait for Nissan to, to sort it out. Yes, we should. Uh, persist at, at uh, asking him to, to get this situation taken care of. Absolutely, you know, it, it needs to be sorted out. Does it need to be a huge drama? Do you do people need to be cancelling the pre-orders? No, I think that's, I think it's quite ridiculous to be honest. Uh, it, it's a great car. Uh, it's certainly way more capable than the previous uh, generation um, and it has obviously, you know, tons more features as well. Um, I think there's a you know, a huge amount of overreaction going on and I think people perhaps need to just calm down just a little bit. Do I want my car to be sorted out? Yes, absolutely. You know, when, there, when there's a fix for this, I absolutely want Nissan to sort it out. Just got to be patient, work with Nissan. It's going to take them time to figure out a solution to this. Um, and when they do figure out a solution, it's going to take time for like, to roll it out to everyone who's already got it and also deal with the backlog of orders already going out and change the processes in the factory. It's going to be a slow process. We just need to be patient uh, and I'm sure they'll get to the bottom of it eventually. Right, well, I'm going to stop rabbiting on. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I just got a phone call from the uh, Nissan UK head office. Uh, they say they're investigating the 2018 Nissan Leaf uh, rapid charge issues, but they don't really want to jump the gun and start saying uh, what action they're going to take until they've had a chance to fully investigate the issue, which I believe is fair. Um, they wanted to reassure me that they're looking into it and they'll call me again as soon as they have uh, more information to share. Uh, but they also said you know they're not going to ring every day just saying, hey, look, there's no update. So... That's that's understandable. I said I was willing to help with any investigation, but they said they've already got two cases in hand, so they're working with two customers already who have reported the issue. Um, and so they said they probably don't need any uh, additional information from me, but they are uh, testing this obviously with the two affected, well, with, with the two customers that first reported the issue uh, and also on their own internal fleet. So hopefully uh, we'll hear something back at some point in the near future. Uh, it's good to know that they are listening. Uh, and I guess we'll... Um, We'll find out more as soon as uh, as soon as more information becomes available. Right, thanks for watching.